Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 20 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam, and today we're going to be focusing on other graphs. So we've looked at linear graphs, graphs in the form y equals mx plus c. We're now going to look at graphs such as the cubic graphs. They're graphs where it's x cubed. So and if you've got the court manager revision cards, card number 36 will be useful for you. We're going to look at exponential functions, so such as y equals 2 to the power of x and things like that, where it's an exponential graph, and that's revision card 34. And we're going to be looking at reciprocal graphs, so where it's 1 over x or 2 over x and things like that, y equals 1 over x and things like that. And we'll be looking at those reciprocal graphs, and that's revision card 35. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at those other graphs. We're going to be looking at how to plot them. We're going to be looking at how to sketch them and then answer some questions on them. So let's get started. Hi, in this video, we're going to look at reciprocal graphs, we're going to look at cubic graphs, and then we're going to look at exponential graphs. And tomorrow, we'll look at quadratic graphs in a bit more detail. So we've looked at them previously whenever we looked at topics such as quadratic inequalities, but we'll look at those quadratic graphs in even more detail tomorrow because they're quite an important topic. Today, we're going to be looking at reciprocal graphs, cubic graphs, and exponential graphs. It's very important to know the shapes of these graphs and what they look like. So if you've got window pens, jot them on your windows, write them on your cheat sheets, uh, get those court manager revision cards out with those cards, and so on. But they're very important to know the shapes of these graphs. So let's start off by looking at reciprocal graph. So here we've got a reciprocal graph. We know it's a reciprocal graph because we've got this x on the denominator. We've got y equals 4 over x. So this is a reciprocal graph. And I would like you to draw this reciprocal graph. Now, so press pause, work out these y points, these y coordinates, and plot the graph and see what it looks like. Okay, so if x is equal to 10, 4 divided by 10 is 0 0.4. 4 divided by 8 would be equal to a half or 0 0.5. 4 divided by 4 would be 1. 4 divided by 2 would be 2. 4 divided by 1 would be 4, and 4 divided by a half would be 8. So we've got our points, now let's plot them. So a half across 8 up, so a half across 8 up would be there. 1 across 4 up, 1 across 4 up would be here. 2 across 2 up, 2 across 2 up would be there. 4 across 1 up would be here. 8 across a half up would be here. And 10 across and 0 0.4 up would be here. So this is what the points would look like. Now we're going to do a nice curve through them, and it would look something like this. And that's it. I've just drawn a nice curve through those points. Now, if we have a look here, we get some ideas in terms of the shape of the reciprocal graph. The reciprocal graph will always be above the x-axis. So no matter what value of x you have, for instance, if x is equal to a million, you've got 4 divided by a million, you've still got something. So the x-axis is what we call an asymptote. This graph will approach the x-axis but never reach it. And likewise, the y-axis is an asymptote as well. So for instance, if you divide by a naught point number, such as 0.1, you're going to get 40 and so on. So as you get closer and closer to the y-axis, the value for our 4 over x will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but I'll never reach the y-axis because you can't divide by 0. 4 divided by 0 is undefined. So that's a reciprocal graph whenever we've got values of x bigger than 0. Now let's have a look at a question which includes negative values as well. So here we've got with the graph of y equals 2 over x. So again, this is a reciprocal graph. We've got this x on the denominator. And I would like you to plot, find these points and plot them on this graph and see what this graph looks like. So press pause now and try that now. Okay, so if x is equal to 5, 2 divided by 5 is 0 0.4. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 divided by a half, so how many halves go into 2? That would be 4. 2 divided by negative a half, well, 2 divided by half is 4, so 2 divided by negative a half would be minus 4. 2 divided by negative 1 would be minus 2. 2 divided by negative 2 would be negative 1. And 2 divided by negative 5 would be negative 0.4. So we've got our points, now let's plot them. Okay, so we plot the points on the right-hand side of the y-axis. So that looks like the reciprocal graph we've looked at before. Obviously, we had our 4 over x, and here we've got our 2 over x. Um, as the value above the x gets bigger, it just moves out slightly. So that's for the values of x that are positive. Now let's draw this side. And that's it. It would look something like that. So that's the shape of the reciprocal graph. And it's important to know that shape. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, so this question asks us to sketch the graph of 1 over x. So press pause now and sketch the graph of y equals 1 over x. Okay, so in terms of the graph of 1 over x, it's a reciprocal graph, so it would look something like this. And that's it. That's my sketch of y equals 1 over x. So it would look something like that. Obviously, with the x-axis and y-axis being asymptotes, and it would look like that, and it would look like that. And it's important to know that shape. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says to circle the coordinates of the point that lies on the graph of y equals 6 over x. So one of these points lies on this graph. Press pause now and figure out which of these points lies on this graph. Okay, so in terms of these coordinates, remember you've got your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate, your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate, and your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute these values into the graph and figure out which of these lies on the graph. Actually, just before I do that, let's just actually consider them a second. 6, 0 would be 6 along 0 up. So that would be, if we have a look at this, 6 along 0 up would be here somewhere. Obviously, the reciprocal graph doesn't touch or reach the x-axis. So this point here couldn't lie on the graph because it's 6 along 0 up. The x-axis and the y-axis are asymptotes. So that point couldn't lie on the graph. 
And if we look at this one, zero across six up, that would be actually on the y-axis. It would be zero across six up. It would be up there somewhere. And again, that couldn't lie on a reciprocal graph. So that one couldn't lie on the graph either. So actually, let's focus on these two. So let's substitute in our x values and let's see what the value for y would be. So we've got the y is equal to six divided by x. Well, if x is equal to negative one, we would get six divided by negative one. And six divided by negative one would be negative six. So that one wouldn't work. If you think about it, negative one, six. Well, negative one, six would be up there somewhere. Well, actually, it would have to be down there somewhere. So it would have to be negative six, not six. So that one wouldn't work. So it means that it should be this point, six along one up. Let's check it. Y equals six over x. If x is equal to six, we would have y equals six divided by six. And six divided by six is one. So six along one up. Let's think about it. Six along one up. That would work. So yes, that point would work. So let's circle it. And if you got that, well done. OK, so I've had a look at reciprocal graphs. And we're going to look at quadratic graphs in more detail tomorrow. Remember quadratic graphs from our work on quadratic inequalities and things like that, or where we've got those x squared x's and numbers where the highest power of x is a squared. Now we're going to look at cubic graphs, and that's where you've got y equals and the highest power of x will be a cubed. So we've got y equals x cubed. So in terms of this graph y equals x cubed, press pause now and figure out where these y coordinates will be and plot this graph and think what that graph would look like. Okay, so to find the value for y, we're going to cube the value for x. So 2 cubed is 8. 1 cubed is 1, and 0 cubed is 0. Negative 1 cubed, well, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, times negative 1 would be negative 1. Negative 2 cubed, well, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, times negative 2 would be negative 8. And negative 3 cubed, well, negative 3 times negative 3 is equal to 9, times negative 3 would be negative 27. So we've got these points, so let's plot them. So the graph would look something like this. So this y equals x cubed graph has this shape. And it's quite an important one to remember that whenever you just got y equals x cubed, it looks something like this. Now, as we introduce x squared and numbers and so on, it will look slightly different. And we'll look at an example like that in a second. But this is what the graph of y equals x cubed looked like, the basic x cubed graph. OK, let's look at y equals negative x cubed. OK, so we're now going to look at the graph of y equals negative x cubed. Now, before we do this one, actually, with 24 days to go, we looked at transformations of graphs. And if we let our x cubed graph, our y equals x cubed, be y equals f of x, this graph would be y equals equals negative f of x, so the negative x cubed graph. So I want you to have a think about in terms of if you have your x cubed graph, or y equals x cubed, if that's y equals f of x, what this graph would look like, y equals minus f of x. So have a think of that now. OK, so let's work out the points and plot them and see if you're right. OK, so x equals 2. So 2 cubed is 8, but it's going to be negative 8 it's because it's negative 1 or negative 8. And so it's going to be negative 8. 1, 1 cubed is 1. Remember, we're times it by negative 1 here, or we're making it negative. So 1 times negative 1 would be negative 1. 0 cubed is 0, so that's just going to be 0. Negative 1 cubed is equal to negative 1. But we're times it by negative 1 here, or this negative sign will change the sign. So because it was negative 1, it's not going to be 1. Or if you times it negative 1 times 1, it's 1. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8, but we're changing the sign. So that's going to be 8, and then that would be 27. So let's plot them. And that's it. It looks something like that. And if we think back to our transformations of graphs, because it's negative f of x, that's a reflection in the x-axis. And if you look at the two graphs, it is a reflection in the x-axis. So that's it. OK, so we've looked at the simple cubic graphs. Now let's have a look at something a bit more complicated. So this time we've got y equals x cubed minus 3x minus 1. So in other words, you're going to cube the value of x, you're going to subtract 3 times the value of x, and then you're going to take away 1. Now you could do these on the calculator, and actually you can use the table function on the calculator quite nicely, where if you had something like this, what you would do is you would press, you'd go into table, you would then type in x cubed minus 3x minus 1, you would do start at negative 3, end at 3, interval 1, and it would give you all the values, and that's quite nice whenever you're dealing with your calculator and those questions. Alternatively, if we were to work it out manually, if x equal to 3, we would do 3 cubed minus 3 3 times 3 take away 1. 3 cubed is 27. We're going to take away 9 and we're going to take away 1. So that would be equal to 17. And let's just check that. That's right. Okay, let's look at our next one. Whenever x is equal to 2, so you'd have 2 cubed minus, and then in brackets, 3 times 2, take away 1. 2 cubed is 8. We're going to take away 6 and take away 1. So it's going to be equal to 1. And let's just check that. Okay, and so on. So I want you now to press pause and work out the rest of these values. And if you worked out the rest of the values, whenever x equal to 1, you get negative 3. If x equal to 0, you get negative 1. If x equal to negative 1, you get 1. If x equal to negative 2, you get negative 3. And if x equal to negative 3, you get negative 19. And when you plot those points and draw a nice curve through them, it would look something like this. So it would come up, it would then come down again, and then come up again. And that would be the shape of that cubic graph. So sometimes cubic graphs, whenever it's just something like x cubed, it would have this shape. But then as you introduce the x squareds and x's and numbers and so on, it can change and become this graph where you've got these 
these two turning points, perhaps a maximum and then a minimum, where you've got this turning point go here, a maximum, and then this one a minimum. And if it was minus x cubed, you'd find the graph would come down and then you'd have a minimum, a maximum, and so on. Okay, and that's it. So that's what that cubic graph would look like. Okay, so we've had a look at reciprocal graphs and cubic graphs. Now let's look at exponential graphs. And you may have heard of exponential in terms of exponential growth. I don't know if you've ever come across the question where you're offered either a thousand pound for every square of a chessboard, or you might be offered a penny for this first square, 2p for the next one, 4p for the next one, and you have to choose which is the best option to, to choose. A lot of people choose well, the million pound for each square, whatever it is, uh, but actually the exponential one in terms of the 1p, 2p, 4p, 8p, and so on, all would work out to be the much better choice because it exponentially grows. So we're going to look at the graph of y equals 2 to the power of x. So we've got a certain number bigger than 0 to the power of x. So that's an exponential graph, and we're going to choose our values for x. So I want you to press pause now. If you've got 2 to the power of x, I want you to work out what this would be if you've got a power of 3, a power of 2, if x equal to 1, if x equal to 0, if x equal to negative 1, if x equal to negative 2. Okay, if x equal to 3, you'd have 2 cubed. 2 cubed is equal to 8. If you've got 2 to the power of 2, 2 squared is 4. If you've got 2 to the power of 1, you'd have that's equal to 2. If x equal to 0, you'd have 2 to the power of 0, and then anything, apart from 0, to the power of 0 is equal to 1, so that's equal to 1. Then we've got negative 1. So remember our negative indices, if we've got 2 to the power of negative 1, we do 1 over, and then we do the positive power, so that's 2 to the power of 1, and 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2, so that's equal to a half. So that would be equal to 0 0.5, or a half. And then finally, 2 to the power of negative 2, well, 2 to the power of negative 2 would be 1 over 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so it would be a quarter, so that's equal to a quarter. So if you got those, well done. And if you plot those points, it would look something like this. Now, I've taken the Corp Miles revision card, and I've taken this graph from it. So you've got here 0 across 1 up, 0 across 1 up, 1 across 2 up, 2 across 4 up, 3 across 8 up. The next one will be 4 across 16 up, 5 across 32 up, and so on. It's getting very big very quickly. And in terms of this left-hand side, it's getting closer and closer to the y-axis. So, for instance, here you've got uh, minus 1, 0 0.5, minus 2, 0 0.25, and so on. It gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never reaches it. So this is the exponential graph. It looks something like this. And it's important to know its shape. And if the number that you're doing the power to is bigger than 1, it will have this shape. If it's equal to 1, it will just be a horizontal line through 0, 1, because 1 to the power of anything would just be 1. And if it's a decimal number, such as 0.5 and so on, what happens is the graph comes down the other way. Um, and obviously, it's any value that's bigger than 0 and less than 1, it would be coming down that way, passing through 1 and carrying on, again, okay, approaching the x-axis. But this would be the shape of uh, if your value is bigger than 1, it would look something like that. Okay, let's have a look at a question now. So here we've got three questions. We've got the graph y equals 8 to the power of x passes through the point 0, 1. Can you think whether that's true or false? The graph of 3 to the power of x passes through the point 3, 9. Think if that's true or false. And finally, the graph of y equals 5 to the power of x passes through the point negative 1, 0 0.2. Is that true or false? So press pause now and work that out. Okay, so one of the features of these exponential graphs, if it's just a value to the power of x, what you'll find is they pass through the point 0, 1, as long as you're not multiplying it by anything or adding anything. So in terms of this one here, 0, 1, the graph of y equals 8 to the power of x, it passes through the point 0, 1. It seems true. Let's check it. If x equal to 1, you'd have 8 to the power of 0, and 8 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So y would be equal to 1. So that's true. Okay, next, y equals 3 to the power of x passes through the point 3, 9. So we've got our x coordinate and our y coordinate. Let's work out 3 to the power of 3. So 3 cubed is 27. It's not 9, so that would be false. Okay, and finally, the graph of y equals 5 to the power of x passes through the point negative 1, 0 0.2. So that would be 5 to the power of negative 1. And 5 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 5 to the positive power. So that would be 1 over 5. And 1 over 5 is a fifth, which is 0 0.2. So that's true. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. Okay, let's look at one last question. So we've looked at exponential graphs. We've looked at reciprocal graphs. We've looked at cubic graphs. We have looked at quadratic graphs previously, and we're going to look at them in much more detail tomorrow. So here's a question. And actually, I've done the quadratic one for you. This is the graph of y equals x squared, and we'll look at those in more detail tomorrow. But we've got the graph of y equals x cubed, y equals 2 to the power of x, and y equals 1 over x. Can you label which one of these graphs is for each of these equations? So do that now. Okay, so this is the quadratic graph, y equals x squared. It's that U-shaped parabola, and we'll talk about those tomorrow. This one, we've just looked at that. It exponentially grows. It's getting very big very quickly. It's going to go up, 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 up. So it's going to be a graph where x is the power. So it's going to be graph of y equals 2 to the power of x. So that is graph B. 
Okay, this one, this is your reciprocal graph, because obviously if you take one and you divide it by a positive value, you're going to get a positive. If you divide it by a negative, you get a negative, and it has this shape. So this would be graph C. That's the graph of y equals 1 over x. And finally, this graph is your cubic graph, because obviously if you cube a negative value, it's going to be a negative. And if you cube a positive value, you're going to get a positive. And if you cube 0, you get 0. So that's your, your basic cubic graph, your y equals x cubed graph. So that would be graph D. And that's it. And if you got those, well done. And that's it. So in today's video, we looked at those cubic graphs, we looked at those exponential graphs, and we looked at those reciprocal graphs, <laughs> like reciprocal graphs. So in today's video, we've looked at those different types of graphs. I really hope you find this video useful. Uh, there's obviously 20 days to go to your GCC math exam, so you're doing fantastically well going through these videos. Keep up the hard work. You've got 20 days to go. Keep revising hard. Keep working hard on past papers. And remember also to avail of anyone that's around you, because obviously you might have maybe older brothers and sisters who have done the GCSE maps and may have been quite successful with it. So they might be there to ask questions too. Um, also your parents, perhaps they might be good at GCSE maps or maps, you know, so they might be someone you can turn to. But also your teacher, if you're finding any particular topics hard or challenging at this point, now is a good time to perhaps speak to your teacher and say, but can I go through this topic with you or can I go through that topic with you? I think they'd appreciate you actually asking them to go through something with them because it shows them that you care about your GCSE maths and they, they, you know, teachers want to help out. So go and speak to your maths teacher and ask them to go through a particular topic with you. Don't do it in the middle of a lesson, in the middle of them explaining something, say, oh, sorry, miss, can you go through this? And they're like, I'm middle of teaching now, but, you know, go and see them at break time or lunchtime after school and just ask them for some extra help on topic X, Y, or Z. But I really hope you find this useful. Tomorrow there'll be 19 days to go to GCSE maths exams. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.